Melatonin, it's one of the most powerful and most effective anti-aging hormones your body has because melatonin governs a lot of these antioxidant defense processes. It helps you to sleep better and it also conducts things like a Havaji growth hormone increase that happens in your sleep. I don't think that you should take like a melatonin supplement all the time, but there are certain situations where microdosing melatonin and periodically taking it, cycling it, is actually a very good anti-aging strategy. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the dosage of melatonin, how much you should take and how frequently. Do it. So first we have to refute the biggest myth about melatonin supplementation, which is that taking melatonin as a supplement exogenously will suppress your natural melatonin production. And uh, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> even in like a larger doses of melatonin, like 50 milligrams, five zero, even doses like that haven't been shown to suppress natural melatonin production. Naturally, your body produces melatonin when it's dark, when uh, you're not exposed to bright lights. Your body produces around 0.3 three milligrams of melatonin, something like that. That's actually quite a small amount compared to many of the uh, dosages in supplements. But besides that, melatonin already has also like antioxidant benefits and anti-inflammatory benefits that you get. Melatonin can also be used to fix your uh, jet lag and circadian rhythm mismatches. So if you are doing shift work or something, then taking melatonin at the right time can have a positive effect on pretty much uh, re-establishing your uh, circadian rhythm. And usually for that, you do need like a slightly larger amount. So 1.5 milligrams is what has been used in this particular study to um, help to fix the uh, shift workers' uh, circadian rhythms. For overall sleep quality, then there is almost like a dose-dependent effect on improving uh, sleep quality. So in this study, they took like two groups uh, and uh, one of them was low melatonin dosage, 0.3 milligrams, and the other one was high, so 5 milligrams. And uh, they did see that even like the 0.3 milligrams of melatonin supplement had a slight increase in sleep efficiency. But uh, the 5 milligram group actually had a, like a large, much, much larger uh, benefit for uh, sleep efficiency. So there is slight love, like a dose dependent increase in some of the sleep efficiency that you get. But this can also be very subjective. Some people, even if they take like one milligram of melatonin, they're going to like wake up more tired, groggy, and uh, they get like, yeah, moody as well. So higher amounts of melatonin are linked with like depression and mood issues and those kind of things. So you don't want to take like a large dosage just for no reason. Like taking a large dosage makes sense only if you have had like a bad night's sleep. You haven't slept well for like several days in a row, you're jet lagged, you're doing shift work or something like that. On a habitual everyday basis when you don't really, you know, suffer from sleep deprivation, you're pretty much in your everyday routine, then it doesn't make sense to take like any more than 1.5 milligrams. You should take like, yeah, like the 0.3 milligrams on an everyday basis if you're just taking melatonin for the antioxidant benefits and as like a micro strategy or a micro dosing strategy for anti-aging purposes. However, there is the danger that uh, melatonin can have a negative effect on sex hormones, especially in men, uh, in terms of uh, reducing semen quality and semen volume and testosterone levels. In this particular study, they gave men uh, three milligrams of melatonin for a few days, and uh, in six men out of eight, there was no change in semen quality, but in two of the individuals out of eight, there was a decrease in sperm concentration and motility. Melatonin in very large quantities can also be contraceptive. So uh, actually in the 90s, uh, it was used like a contraceptive uh, treatment. So like a very large doses of melatonin. So that's like 75 milligrams of melatonin. Uh, that for like sustained periods of time, not in like one single go, uh, that would, would have like a negative effect on fertility as well as uh, be a potential contraceptive agent. Dosages of, you know, three milligrams, five milligrams, less than that are generally safe and they don't have any like, you know, contraceptive effects. The threshold for the contraceptive effects of melatonin appear to be yeah, 75 milligrams, which is what you, you know, rarely would ever take. Like you would have to take the entire bottle of the melatonin to get actually 75 milligrams of uh, melatonin. Generally, the studies do find that even dosages of over 10 milligrams of melatonin, they don't cause any like uh, adverse side effects and they're generally safe. You know, there's no real immediate danger to uh, taking like, a very large dose of melatonin which I think it's very hard for it to happen anyway. Like if most dosages are, yeah, like 0 0.3, 0 0.5, or one milligram or three milligram, even like the pharmaceutical melatonin that you get from a pharmacy, that's only even three milligrams. And the most general supplements are like only one milligram at most. 
But the issue is that many of the melatonin supplements don't have the exact amount of melatonin that it says on the label. And uh, they can actually have up to 478% more melatonin than the label says, <laughs> which uh, you know can be problematic. But even then, let's say the supplement it says it has one milligram, but 478% of that is still like, you know, five milligrams. So it's still within the safe uh, threshold. It's still safe uh, in terms of uh, your, you know, uh, testosterone levels and uh, contraceptive effects. So it doesn't have like any actual negative side effects, even if the dosage is 478% uh, uh, larger. If you do take 10 milligrams of melatonin, and it's actually 478% more, then yeah, that could lead you to like the contraceptive effects uh, territory. But uh, yeah, like I said, generally, I wouldn't recommend ever to take any more than like one milligram. If you're short on sleep, you're jet lagged, you're yeah, sleep deprived for several days, then maybe three milligrams is the most I would take. But for men, especially don't do that, you know, multiple days in a row, maybe once, once every now and then is fine. But if you consistently have this large amount of melatonin in your system, then that could uh, decrease your semen quality and the testosterone levels. Feel how soft my skin is. So in conclusion, the optimal amount of melatonin that you would want to take is around like 0.3 milligrams on a everyday basis. Uh, not every day per se, but pretty much, you know, every other day is a good amount. You don't want to become like psychologically dependent of it, although there is no like real negative feedback loop on the natural production of melatonin, even if you take like up to 50 milligrams. So it's, you know, safe in the sense once you stop taking the melatonin, your body still produces melatonin in the absence of light. Uh, but uh, generally many people can develop like this psychological dependence. So they think that they need it. Whereas in reality, they uh, don't. They just need to rewire their mind. If you have been sleep deprived, you're short on sleep for a few nights, you're jet lagged, shift work, whatever it is, then uh, like three milligram dosage in one single occasion is fine. And it can help you to, you know, catch up on the bad sleep and reestablish the circadian rhythm. Dosage is up to like 10 milligrams. I don't think they are necessary. And uh, five milligrams is also a bit too much. In my opinion, three milligrams would already give you enough. What I personally do is that I take like 0 0.3 milligrams of melatonin uh, like every other day and uh, probably like once or twice a week I may take one milligrams of melatonin. But what I definitely do on an everyday basis is to block out artificial blue light before bed because the artificial blue light will inhibit 99% of your melatonin production and it's going to decrease your sleep quality. That is where the blue blocking glasses come in. They're pretty like the best like gadgets or most bang for your buck in terms of improving your melatonin levels and overall sleep quality. So even if you're not taking melatonin as a supplement, what you definitely should do every day is to make sure that you're not exposed to artificial blue light before bed, at least one hour before bed. The best brand for that is uh, Bond Charge. Check out their Christmas sale that uh, gives you a 20% discount at bondcharge.com forward slash seamland. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seam. Stay optimized, stay empowered.